Hi, my name is Paul Christensen. I'm a pulmonary physician in the Beaumont Health System. The first topic in this series is entitled The Airways in Health and Disease. The lung is made up of a series of branching tubes that transport air to the end air sacs where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged between the air and the blood. The main breathing tube is called the trachea. The trachea branches into two smaller tubes that branch again to supply the air to the lobes of the left and the right lung. The branching continues for more than 16 divisions until it reaches the end air sacs, also known as alveoli. This set of branching bronchial tubes from the trachea or trunk to the end air sacs has been likened to a tree. When all the bronchial tubes are open, the air flows freely. Unfortunately, the tree is not always healthy. The bronchial tubes can be affected by several diseases, including asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. COPD includes both bronchitis and emphysema. In these diseases, inflammation, excess mucus production, and spasm of the tiny muscles that surround the smallest bronchial tubes combine to affect normal breathing. The tiny muscles that surround the small airways become enlarged and constricted in the presence of inflammation. These processes obstruct airflow. When airflow is obstructed, symptoms such as wheezing and shortness of breath occur. How do we get medicines to the smallest twigs in the tree more than 16 branches away from the trunk where they can be most effective? The solution is to deliver medications as a cloud of small particles or aerosol. If taken properly, particles of medicine travel through the breathing tubes to the smallest branches to relieve or partially relieve the obstruction by reversing inflammation, relaxing the muscles, and decreasing mucus production. In this video, we learned about the anatomy of the lung and how diseases such as asthma or COPD affect the smallest bronchial tubes. We learned that the best way to treat these problems is to use aerosols to deliver medications into the lung. To optimize the use of aerosols, we need to use the right medications, generate and deliver the aerosols to the right place, and minimize the risk of treatment. We'll cover each of these topics in a separate video. 